I have to screw up the intro somewhere. It's just part of the nature of the show now. Welcome back to the Side by Side Guys Off-Road Podcast. I'm Big Z, and I'm joined online today by a new friend this year, Brent and Gilliam from 212 Gloves. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you, brother. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be on with you, man. Yeah, so uh, we met online a few uh, or a number of months ago. Uh, uh, basically, I got drawn to the fact that you have a pretty sweet little build uh, that you got going on. And then we got to know each other a little bit at some of the UTV takeover events this year and um, connected uh, via another number of different people. And um, But yeah, give us a little background on who you are, what you do, and uh, the businesses you run and, and all that. And just kind of give us a quick synopsis of who you are. Yeah, so uh, Brent Gillen from Two and Two Performance Gloves. Um, you know, we, we I work for a glove manufacturer um, that builds task specific gloves for the commercial industry, which allows us to do a lot of off road events. Because typically, most of the guys that run off road events or work on race teams have blue collar jobs. So we like to support all those blue collar jobs. Uh, those guys, at least, um, you know, in the off road community as well, because those guys pour their you know blood, sweat, and tears into the builds that they have, and. Uh, it's been a really, really promising job. I really love what I do and I got a great team and it's, it's been awesome. Um, I bought a can am, I would say <clears throat> about two years ago and, uh, you know, slowly started doing the build. And then, you know, I do a lot of the off-road events. So I started getting invited to different places. And last year we did the trail hero event in San Hall, Utah. And while I was there, I was reached out to by Fiberworks off-road. And, you know, they told me that they had a, a four seat, Ford Raptor Can-Am conversion kit for the car and asked me if I'd be interested in, in doing the build. And of course I'm like, that sounds amazing. No one has that. And it looks like a little mini trophy truck. So I jumped on board. They, uh, they picked me up as an ambassador for the team. We built the car out with fierce off road. Um, it was definitely a little bit longer than I had anticipated building it out. I really didn't know <laughs> what I was getting into. Like there was a, there was definitely some points where my wife would come home and see the, the car in the garage, just, you know, completely cut apart and torn down. She's like, what did you just do to that $30,000 car? We just bought. I paid so, for that piece of metal. Where's it going? Yeah. So it, it you know, it, it was, it's, it was, it took some perfecting. Um, but, uh, we showcased it with the body complete for the first time with desert whips and the dune and destroy guys out in Glamis on new year's of last year. Um, and it was funny cause there was a lot of, there was a lot of negativity, neg negative publicity around it. Like someone had posted it. We went over to the swing set double. I'm not sure if you're, if you're familiar with the swing yep. set double Glamis. Yeah. It's a pretty big scent. Um, John from Dune and destroy hucks that thing. Perfect. Every time. And so we were over there hanging out and we get back the next day. And also I start getting text messages like, dude, did you see your car on the, uh, Robbie Gordon page on the speed page? And I'm like, no. And they're like, so I, I look into it and there's like 279 comments of people just <laughs> talking smack. Like every, every mom needs a dune car and like, like all this stuff. And I was like, that sucks. But whatever it was publicity for the car, a car hadn't been wrapped yet. <clears throat> so it was all white and just way too much body with no logos to break it up. <laughs> <clears throat> so, you know, like, you know, we're hanging out by the campfire and everyone's commenting. We put some desert whips logos on it. Some other, the sponsored logos that we had with us. And, you know, as we're drinking by the campfire, John starts, you know, edging me like, are you going to hit the double? And I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll probably do it if it looks good. And he's like, there's no way you're going to do it. And Nick's like, well, if you want to do it, like, let's do it. I'm like, all right, let's check it out. I'm like, tell everyone to be there, you know, new year's Eve noon wind pending. Woke up the next morning to, I don't know how many comments and, and, and people chiming in. And, uh, I was like, well, what did I sign up for? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, cut to new year's, new year's Eve day. We head over there. The wind's good. My wife's like, you're not jumping this. I'm like, it feels good. You know, I, I <laughs> it always John feels good before off. you do it. <laughs> yeah. Paul John's lines off of it. I, I kind of had an idea of the speed. I was just, we've been jumping the car all week, kind of testing suspension to get, get it to fly straight. Right. Like his four seat can ams, they, they're, they always want to endo cause they're so long. Right. And, uh, I felt pretty comfortable and my wife gave me the green light. She's like, if you want to do it, you feel comfortable, go ahead and get it done. And so we lined up for it and sent it and the car just, it handled it. Perfect. Landed right over the downside. It's, it was weird. It almost felt like the body kind of parachuted it down. Like I didn't even bottom up. I was going to say you have a parasail now strapped to the frame of that car. So yeah. So it worked out really, really cool. And then, um, I kind of opened the floodgates for all of the sponsors that helped me with the build. Like as soon as 
it got so much publicity off of that jump. Everyone was like, wanted to be a part of it. And, and I, you know, I brought on a lot of sponsors for the car just because we go to a lot of shows and it'll be on display at any show that I work for two and two. So it really worked out. And I think that's where you and I started, started hanging like, or communicating on Instagram because right. I was really interested in getting up to Coos Bay and just experiencing that, you know? And, uh, I'm super humbled that I did because like coming into the event that you guys put on, I have never been to an event that is so, focused on the family aspect of the UTV world, you know, and anyone can enter it's all for the drivers and all for the family. And it's just, it was, it was such a beautiful, beautiful time, man. And then the scenery, it was just, it was bliss up there. So it was, I mean, you have dunes down there and Glamis and all that, but what was the comparison to going up to North to Oregon and seeing that kind of a perspective? So yeah, it's my heart's torn, right? Like (laughs) so Glamis, Glamis is the only place that you can go and do ride huge bowls. And, you know, I take people there that are like professional motorcycle riders and can really rip off road cars in the desert. And we go to Glamis. I'm like, Hey, all right, just follow me, look ahead and like find your lines. And, you know, we'll transfer, we'll be ripping a dune that's 300 feet down at 60 miles an hour and transfer from 45 degrees into another 45 degree bowl the other way. And everyone that I take, by the time we stop, they're like, shaking like oh my god i've never done this in the car like this is crazy and so that aspect of glamis i love right because it's just it's so gnarly the traverse you can ride any angle coos bay is different in the aspect of you don't have a lot of those bull transfers it's a lot of up and overs yep and then throw in trees (laughs) so like you can come over a rise and there's like a giant branch sticking out and you know (laughs) take out the side of your car so it's, it was definitely different, but I mean, it's so beautiful. I mean, we're, we're, you're at sea level 60 degrees out. So the car is just running phenomenal with the air up there. And it was just, it was really, really, really fun. Like I, I'm definitely like, that's a bucket list check for me for sure. I can't wait to go next year. So let's, uh, let's deviate a little bit and talk about two and two, and then we'll jump back into the cars. Yeah. Um, kind of gives a history on two and two and, and what you guys are doing. So I started with two and two about four years ago. It's a new company. It was about, uh, it was about a year old when I jumped in. Um, and, and basically we just, we, we build task specific gloves for the commercial industry. So what that means is, you know, if you go to a job site, like say we, we, um, we covered Kiwit construction. That was a big, um, a big company that built the uh, Raiders and Rams stadiums. So gotcha. on those job sites, they have to wear, they have an on glove or a glove policy on site. So if you're on site working, you have to wear a glove and the glove has to have cut protection um, to a certain level. That way, you know, it reduces recordables on, on hand injuries because hand lacerations are, are really, really common. So we build gloves with cut protection, FR protection, full welding gloves, um, you know, just whatever the client needs or company needs, if we don't have a solution for it, we will go ahead and build one for them. So it's, it's really nice. It's, it's been, um, it's weird. I came from the mortgage industry for 15 years. And so to make the switch to, because that's selling, an easy transition, it wasn't <laughs> easy, but I mean, two on twos, um, just their whole persona and, and what they're about. It was, it was a really good fit for my personality and my lifestyle. You know what I mean? It's, I get to go to all the off-road events. Like I'm considered one of their big hype mans. They, they have me on the mic with all our speakers at the events when we booth and we just, you know, we have a ton of fun and get to meet a lot of amazing people. So it's just, it works. You know what I mean? And my whole team at two and two is just like a well-greased machine. Everyone, there's no drama. Everyone gets along. Everyone has each other's back. So it's like, I've never had a place where I actually feel so at home and so happy to be there than I do at two and two. So That's it's, right. it's pretty epic. So what kind of, uh, so you said you, in the construction site, but you also have a various other lines of gloves into like mechanical and, and everyday work gloves as well. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, every, every yeah. So full mechanics style gloves, um, you know, touchscreen gloves. We do a lot of military gloves. Now we're breaking into the military aspect, which is really exciting. I just outfitted the USS Theodore, um, Roosevelt, the aircraft carrier, uh, like two weeks ago. So that was super, super cool for me. I'm waiting to get invited down there so I can get a tour of that stuff. Cause I'm kind of a, a nerd when it comes to military, like equipment, I just geek out on it. It's for super sure. fun. So we do, a- we do that. We do, uh, we're, we, we make uh, knee pads now, any PPE equipment we're doing, we're coming out with, um, safety glasses, vests. So anything that we can help any kind of construction company protect their employees, that's what we're building. 
So it's so we just uh, need to start working on the guys to start coming out with a driver's line of gloves and uh, and some gear there. <laughs> so I have I have been hit up numerously by drivers to build a driver glove. Um, the thing with the driver glove is there's not a lot of return. Most of everyone wants to get just sponsored by that. Like we move a ton of volume, like thousands, oh, for sure. and thousands of pairs of gloves. So to build a driver glove that we're not really in the industry for, like it would be hard, but on a, on a flip side, we do a lot of private label stuff. Like I build private label gloves for the diesel brothers. So any diesel brother glove you see, we've designed that we create it, we manufacture it for them. So I'm trying to get some other companies to, step up and build some driver gloves to offer with their line. So I don't want to name drop anybody, but I, I, got, a, I got a couple of big ones. I've been pitching pretty hard and, and hoping they, uh, they take the bait and build it. Cause I mean, they build, they build stuff that was, they would go right along with it. You know, right. Complimentary so, is always a nice to fit. Yeah. Just be a nice little add on to their, their, their lineup already. So and the thing I I've noticed about, uh, when I'm out driving long time and, and I feel like I need to have a glove for the extended time I'm using it, um, is that you really only have like moto style gloves or, you know, some sort of like bike glove to wear and, and they don't really, they, they don't really fit the steering wheel. Right. So that's, that's where I mask it. Right. Like you need, you need something that, that fits the steering wheel and, and has the, the durability to get out of the car, fix the tire, get back in the car, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, so I, when I drive or, or when I moto, like I used to race supercross professionally. So I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a big moto head and, um, I ride with our mechanics style gloves. They're touchscreen. I drive with them. You can hop out, change your belt. Like I raced the more race a couple of weeks ago, blew a belt in the middle of the race, took my helmet off, had to reach in through the fender belt changes on that can am are extremely hard now with the bedside. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I got in there and the car was, it was 104 degrees out. So the car itself, the belt, everything was scorching hot. And I was just jumped, dove right in with my gloves. I was protected, changed the belt out, hopped back in the car. was still able to put my seatbelts on, strap my helmet and then continue the race. Yeah. So, you know, we're all about, building um the best style performance glove that has the most dexterity and the most feeling out there so let's talk a little bit about your racing history you said moto and then the race that you just did here a week ago um kind of gives a background there and then jump into what happened uh, this last week yeah man so uh you know i grew up i started racing moto uh motocross when i was about 13 years old progressed pretty fast did a lot of nationals um by the time i was 16 i was racing intermediate 17 i got my pro card did start doing some pro races took a stab at, at supercross um uh, raced a couple races and then had a really bad crash that, that put me in the hospital for a couple weeks unconscious and that kind of ended my supercross career because it was right at graduation time um and it just it really it really set me apart from like should I go work? I just moved out and had my first apartment. Now I'm laid up and like, I'm losing my car. And, you know, so stepped away from that for a little while. And then, um, through, through my time of, uh, you know, boating and, and just hanging out with the family and, and, um, like Havasu and stuff like that. I met the Teagues and got on their team and we went offshore boat racing down in, uh, you know, Key West and did that for a little while. That was super gnarly. Um, came back, had a really bad accident, in a desert storm poker run about four years ago that kind of ruined my taste for boating. We got, we crashed a boat at 146 miles an hour and I got ejected out and pretty much almost died. So that, that, uh, my wife was very upset with that cause we had just gotten married and you know, that <laughs> laid me up pretty hard. <laughs> so well, uh, welcome to family life. You get to take care of me for a while. <laughs> yeah. So she's like, you know, and I had just come back from a shattered foot. I shattered my foot a day in the dirt, uh, racing the pro pro 450 class on my dirt bike. So I was laid up from that, you know, six months later, two surgeries later, I'm like, Hey, I'm going to go boat racing. Like I need to get out and get this out of my system. And then <laughs> Went boat racing, the boat crashed, got ejected. She gets a phone call from, you know, Teague's wife. Hey, they crashed the boat. We don't know if they're alive yet. You know, and she was all the way here in California. And that just, it, that ruined her. Like when I got out of the hospital, she was like, you're done. I need two years of no racing, <laughs> sell the toys, and we need to work and get out of debt. Cause you put me in like hardships, you know, not working. <laughs> I was like, you know, that's fair. Fair, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> yeah. So, so we knuckled down and, you know, got out of debt, got healthy, um, sold my dirt bikes and then, uh, I sold the boat and bought the Can-Am and that's kind of where we're at now, you know? And then with the Can-Am, um, the Can-Am bill that's that Can-Am has really come to life. I don't really think there's anything stock on that car left, but the dash now. And, um, 
Well, it's stuff. interesting because your car, if you look at it, look through the windows, you can see the stock cage and everything still in there, right? So it's the stock cage. Not really like that car has been cut up and gusseted so much. <laughs> like <laughs> there's not a lot of the stock cage left in it. And then, um, I'm actually, we're actually swapping that whole cage out for a, uh, for a chrome Molly cage. Okay, the whole cool. front of the car is chrome Molly and the whole rear cage that we built out is chrome Molly. And then the sides of the cab are chrome Molly for the body side. So it's the last little piece is the top part of the cage that has a lot of chrome Molly gusset in it and whatnot but you know it's it, it's bugging me that people are like dude that's a stock cage and i'm like not really <laughs> like, like if you look in there there's a lot of add-ons on that thing you right know? so uh so yeah, it'll, it'll complete it out and it'll clean it up too so you don't have those curves coming down in the windows and all that too right uh a little bit it's it's hard to say so i mean we it, it's, we definitely need to work on it a little bit to, to design the cage um deviant one of my suspension uh, sponsors out of idaho those guys build all my like trailing arms and, 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 um, I'm sorry, not my trailing arms. I'll say, oh, you broke one of those last week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they didn't, <laughs> Maybe they will they build my trailing arms. They build my front lower control arms, my shock tower braces, um, you know, my fire extinguisher stuff. Like they've, they're getting to the trailing arms. They just haven't gotten there yet. And unfortunately the trailing arms I keep using, I keep, so, um, <laughs> Yeah, it's one of those deals. But um, there is some very special stuff coming out on the car. Uh, I am rebranding the car so everyone knows it's, you know, we, we did an orange wrap on it and it's all white logoed out. We are changing the body on the car for a new wheel company that I just uh, saw. Oh, oh, oh. We're unveiling it at the sand show next month. It's so nice. It is going to be a completely different look. Uh, we're pretty excited about it. It's going to be, it'll, it'll be fun. But it's, it'll still have, I'll still have the orange crush body. So when we go mob and glamis and whatnot, uh, I'm going to take that body out and go beat on it. Oh, so you're putting a whole different body on it. A whole, yeah. Fiberworks was, uh, you know, gracious enough to build me a complete new body. Um, partially because rewrapping that body with the amount of fiberglass damage I have on that car from, <laughs> it, it's like, dude, it's, <laughs> she's got, she's, 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 she's a little hurt. You know, I mean, I, when we built the car, everyone, we took it to UTV takeover to show what it can do. And it was really nice to showcase it there for, for all the publicity, for all the sponsors. And it, and it did great, but I got a lot of emails like, yeah, it's too bad. You can't <laughs> race that thing. And it's too long. And I'm like, it's a stock wheelbase of a four C can am. It just looks longer because of the hood and the bedsides, right. you know? So I'm like, it'll race. I can race this thing. And everyone's like, you won't do well. So all right. So you went and raced. <laughs> so we went to the more race at Glen Helen and smoked and, and hurt a lot of feelings out there. <laughs> yeah, you did. You did pretty good there. You, you had some, some hiccups and you had a, to do some, uh, some redneck fab. What, yeah, what, what we, happened out there? We definitely had some, um, some challenges to overcome. So we raced Saturday night or Friday night in the bracket challenge, bring what you brung race. Anyone can sign up. The first place prize was $3,500 cash. And I was like, <laughs> let's go, go racing <laughs> so it was cool because it was a night race on Glen helen short course track so i got to showcase the lights the whips you know i had the stereo bumping the whole time i was racing like i was just having fun and uh, we ended up being third we beat trophy trucks class 10 cars class five cars the guys that won were the guys that actually run short course and had short course right. cars like like wyatt you know those guys just <laughs> can't touch them in a two-seater like they're no. just gone and so, um, that worked out really well. And, and dirt design offered to like, Hey, do you want to race Saturday and Sunday? And I'm like, well, I, I don't really want to spend the money on it. It's a lot of money to go racing. You know, the entry was pretty expensive and he's like, they just dirt design. Um, they just signed me as the first UTV, um, driver on their team. Oh, wow. He's like we'll cover the cost. Just, you know, when you got full race support and there was like 15 guys there with their rigs and I'm like, if, all right, let's go. And right. So Saturday morning we lined up, uh, we did qualifying. I got third place in qualifying, uh, out of nine guys. So I was pretty happy with that to not knowing the course at all. And you know, the, the pre-race jitters, like calm down, don't wreck the car. And, uh, we went out and we were leading the race until about the second to last lap. And there's a back straight there that my car was really doing well on. We have an Evo stage three tune on it and I'm running 35s and fierce did the clutching on it. So when I get that thing in the straightaway, dude, I was almost clipping hundred miles down the back straight, <laughs> just railing cars. But I blew a belt at like over 90 miles an hour and just destroyed all the cases, like the aluminum shield that, that covers the cases inside came out like spaghetti. So <laughs> and at that race, you can't have help 
from anyone unless you pull into the pits. Right. So I had to hop out of the car, get all that mangled stuff out, throw a belt on. And, uh, I took back off. And by that time I had dropped down to fourth, I caught up to third and finished third. And then, that's not so, bad going from second to, or leading to go into third or fourth. I mean, that's, that's a pretty quick change. I was pretty happy with it, especially when we pulled in the pits and saw that one of the trailing arms hat was completely open. <laughs> tore, <laughs> tore <in half. laughs> yeah. Like the rear camber on my one wheel was like this. And you know, I was like, ah, oh, something's going on down there. And I looked and I could literally stick my cell phone in the crack of the trailing arm. So dirt design stepped up. Some of the guys on the team had a fab shop about an hour away. They're like, rip that thing apart. The guys came over, grabbed it, took it, welded it, gusseted it, brought it back around midnight. Um, so we got up Sunday morning about six, put the car back together went through everything and lined up to go race again. We were in the second row and we took off. I was in second place, kind of gaining on the leader, but just like taking my time. I didn't want to break anything else and, um, ended up blowing the front diff. So oh. <laughs> yeah, the front diff, uh, I thought the front diff blew cause it was kept going in a limp mode and it just felt weird. Um, so I, you know, I stopped, checked the belt, didn't know what was going on, ended up throwing it in two wheel drive and the car ran fine. So at that time I was like, I think I was in fifth place. We caught up to fourth and I just turned the stereo back on and was playing <laughs> with my indecent turning brake. Cause we were in two wheel drive and just literally just ripped the course with the stereo blasting, like having a good time. And, it, and we, we finished up fourth overall. So it turned out to be just a speed sensor that went bad in the front dip that, ah, for threw it in the limp mode. So it was well, those, good, uh, the sonic waves out of the speaker. That's good for another two horsepower. So, yeah, you know, and it, it was funny because <laughs> like the first time I went by like all the bleachers and everything, you could see people like, is he have stereo on? And by the second <laughs> lap, like everyone was like, yeah, <laughs> you, should, you should be cranking like thunderstruck or something as you fly by. So I think I had on danger zone. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we were rocking some Kenny Loggins or something like that, but it was, it was definitely cool, man. It was fun to showcase it. And it, and uh, a lot of people were shocked at how well the car did. So it was, it was nice to show that not only is it a show car, we built this thing to run hard race or jump. Like it's, it, it, it does what we, we built it to do. So, so that fiberworks uh, body, how much weight does that add to the car? So the whole body kit only weighs about 120 pounds. Really? Um, yeah. So it's fiberglass, off, right? Yeah. Fully fiberglass. I trim off a lot of the fenders because well, for desert, I'm running 35 inch tires on it. And so it's, you can clear rub them, but when you really like start hitting hard in the body flexes, you get some rub. Um, but you know, it's just, it's like any, any regular truck that has a fiberglass body. Like it's, it's fiberglass. It's constantly moving and shifting. Like it's, it's not a, it's not a hard metal body. So it's, 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 you just got to work with it a little bit, but, um, the amount of weight the car weighs now with the added cage and everything, I think I'm only 170 pounds over what it weighed stock. Really? So it's, it's not a real big difference. Cause we took off so much plastic, like the right. amount of plastic we pulled off that thing and how much it weighed was shocking. So, so uh, when you were out racing, I noticed that the whole front clip was missing. What, what happened there? <laughs> so yeah, it was 104 degrees outside. And when I ran my qualifying lap, at, when I was you know fully wooded on the whole course, the car started getting hot. And so the race was 64 miles long and I didn't want to be limited on how hard I could run it due to it overheating. Um, so we did, we were making some adjustments on the front and rent and, and adding some sheet metal to channel the air directly into the hood of the, into the radiator. Cause it, what I've noticed is it speeds over 80 miles an hour in that thing. The front of the car actually lifts and packs air like a boat. Like it, if you're going over four foot whoops at 80 miles an hour in that thing, the front gets super light and it just floats over everything. But <laughs> right. because of that, it's creating some kind of like pressure system under the hood and not letting the radiator pull the air through. Right. You're getting so, to a point where, where the dynamics push the air under instead of through. Right. And so, um, you know, going through qualifying and noticing that I was like, Hey, let's, I don't want to be limited. So let's just pull the hood. Cause it has, doesn't have that problem without the hood on it and, and run it. But you know, that adds a different factor. <laughs> it's Glen Helen. There's a ton of rocks in mud and I'm like, please don't Exposed. blow my radiator out when I'm behind the other cars. Right. Your, your so, position behind the person in front of you has changed yeah, a little bit. <laughs> you know, on the first lap we were all, you know, nuts to butts. And I was just like, ah, don't roost the radiator. Like trying to find lines around everyone. <laughs> so, That's crazy. Yeah, so, yeah. um, 
you know, with the car, you have a number of different upgrades. Like you said, you have the brake, you have uh, the body kit, you have um, a number of um, tune things and suspension things. You know, what kind of are the, some of the handling characteristics that you notice? You didn't add a whole lot of weight and the fundamentals of the car aren't really different. So what, what are some of the different fundamentals of, of handling that car after all these changes? Because I know like when you were jumping, you know, you, you're talking about becoming a parasail when you get the air under you, right? And the wind makes a bigger difference in that situation than in a stock car. What are some of those characteristic changes that you've noticed? So one of the big things that I've noticed, like in Coos Bay, we were jumping into headwind the whole friggin' time, right? So MTS is my suspension tuner. Um, they've done a phenomenal job tuning the suspension. So that car flies really straight. The key to jumping a four seat Can-Am is never letting off the gas. You have to be on the throttle when all four tires leave the ground and then you can let off. If you lift it all before you leave the ground, that thing wants to nosedive. In Coos Bay, when I was jumping, it was, it was, I had to train myself to lift before I let left the takeoff because jumping into that headwind, the car kept catching the wind and just like it would wheelie and I would slap the front end down like super violent. Like I, I, I injured myself up there on some jumps when we were filming for full throttle battery. And, um, it's, it's just, it's just a different style. I know the first time I got in it and, and took it out to the desert, you know, the Can-Am stock hood is like what, five inches wide. And so <laughs> right. when you, when you get sideways in that car, you don't notice the body roll that much, right? Like it feels the, the hood doesn't really move when you got that big Ford Raptor hood on the front of that thing and you whip it into <laughs> the a horizon turn, the comes up so high you're like oh my god am I gonna roll so that was a big adjustment like it really drives like a truck you know as far as your range of motion and what you can see like people get in my car and they're like how do you drive this thing? like you can't see because the, the body's so big I'm like yeah it's like a real truck like this is what it's like in a race car you right. know and and so it, it definitely limits it one of the big Biggest issues I have is in, in the dunes. Um, I don't like to lead in the dunes because coming over stuff, you have no range of view. Like I, I, you're in, you know, in Glamis, when you're in the dunes, you're driving off the guy in front of you's whips, like whatever right. his whips do going over a jump, you know, what kind of transition you can have. And if I don't have that, I'm constantly checking up super hard to roll to like, till I can see and, you know, commit to the dunes. So that aspect of it has definitely been different. Um, as far as like how the car handles with the body, it's still phenomenal. They added weight on the cage with the tire in the back. It, it works really well. I posted a video um, of us going down sand highway to Oldsmobile in Glamis with optic helicopters chasing us. And that was with the spare tire on fully built body wrapped, like first time testing it as fast as it would go over four foot rollers all the way down there. And, and we pulled the helicopter. We were doing over hundred miles an hour, just clipping along. Like, and it was just, perfectly stable flat. So it's, it's definitely set up for pre-running. Um, you know, we obviously make some adjustments when we do like, you know, the Huck stuff. Um, but it's, it, the dynamics are, are right there. All deviant suspension components are amazing. I'm running amp seats and five point harnesses from, uh, from amped and they do a great, I have a PRP steering wheel that, that works really well, full rugged radios, pumper system in it. Um, you know, and the, the indecent turning brake is, is just kind of a fun add on. Like I'm one of the few can ams that actually have a big old hoon handle turning brake <laughs> in the car. So it, it, that, that aspect is like the coolest part of the car. I feel like, you know, I feel like if I had one of those up here in the Northwest and the trails that we ride, I'd probably end up in some trees at some point. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's definitely like, it works the best in two wheel drive. Obviously it does not like four wheel drive. It's really gets upset when she use it in four wheel drive. But, <laughs> um, in the dunes, it, it, you can kind of use it a little bit. It's it, but it just depends on the, the, the sand. If it, the sand's super fluffy and like dry, it works good. If it's like tacky and wet, it does, it's, it just stops the car. Right. So, um, but it really shines in the desert when you're clipping along two wheel drive ripping through the desert and you just need to slap it real quick to get the, the back end to set up for a turn, dude. It's like, it's, it's a different environment, man. It's, it's super fun. I feel like the, uh, the budget allocated to rear tires would probably go up a substantial amount uh, <laughs> once one of those gets put in. You know, that's what's crazy. So uh, we, we, we started running EFX uh, tires on the car, and I have put those things like to the test on asphalt. We've, we've filmed a ton of stuff, just drifting it, doing donuts. And just, uh, I, I did a run not too recently all through fire roads. And the whole time I was in two wheel drives, just drifting, just whoa, drifting, e-brake drifting, like for miles. And I thought for sure when I got there, my rear tires are going to be smoked. And those EFX tires, they just, they just take it. Like I've got probably a 
800 miles on those things, like hard miles, ripping it on asphalt, burning them out. And they're just, they're still like 70, 80% good. So I'm, I'm pretty fortunate with those. They work out really well. So what model are you running on those? Uh, the, uh, the motivator. Yeah. The, okay, the yeah. Motivator. So, those are pretty popular. Yeah. Yeah. They, they work well, man. I was, I was really been really impressed with them too. So and no so, flat yet. <laughs> so. <laughs> I good thing. My, my desk is wood here. I can, I've knocked a few times for you. Um, yeah. the, uh, so you got the car, uh, going in for basically a refresh here shortly or, or is it in the shop right now? No, it's in the garage. Um, so I do all my own work. Um, one of my buddies that owns a side by shop called fierce out here. He, uh, he lets me come in there and, and use his shop and, you know, basically just charges me material. And, and when I need help, like I had no idea how hard it was to fabricate and build a cage. So I, you know, I watched my brother do it. It's a very underestimated skill set that people don't realize when they say, I'm just going to buy an aftermarket cage. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. The amount of time it takes, like I would go into a shop and I'm like, Oh, I'm going to knock this out and I'm going to knock this out and I'm going to get this done this weekend. And like, we're going to be right on task. And then I come home Sunday after working 12 hours a day on the car. And I'm like, I finished a quarter of that. And I right. wasted $200 in material doing it <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, so the learning curve has been super strong, but it's been amazing because I, I really get to appreciate all the guys and the weekend warriors that work jobs and then wrench on their cars on the weekends to get them ready. Like those guys, it's nonstop. My, I don't know how many times my wife's like, when are you going to hang out with us? You're, you're either working <laughs> or you're working on the car. And I'm like, well, we got shows coming up. I got to finish this thing. Like it's, it's a never ending story. So Right now, the, I'm going to take the car over to the shop next week. Fierce is actually heading to Vegas Torino this, this morning to go race Vegas Torino. Um, they wanted me to go with, but I am not a fan of 110 degree weather out there. <laughs> so <laughs> like, nor am I. <laughs> I'm going to bow out. You guys go handle your business. If you need anything, call me. But um, yeah, so uh, next week we'll tear the car down. I, I washed it last week enough to take it apart. It was so muddy from Glen Helen. Oh my God. I, I, racing clubs are dirt in places car. you never realize you, you actually have places for dirt. <laughs> I don't do mud. <laughs> like, it is the worst to clean. So, yeah, I got the car to the point now where I can take it apart and start cleaning it. But while we got it down, I'm going to just give it a full prep for the season. You know, go through the trailing arms, go through the, the, the front end, lube everything, change hardware. Um, you know, a lot of people don't understand that when you're running cars this hard all the time, the car needs a full prep. And you know, right. in doing that, you're giving your family safety in the car because nothing's going to break on trail. I don't know how many times I've taken my car apart and found stuff that was ready to fail. You right. know, and I'm like, oh, that needs to be changed. That needs to be changed, and that just eliminates you know having issues on the trail, and it, and it lets the car perform when it needs to. So that's definitely an underserved idea in the mindset of the consumer is that you have to maintain your car. It's not just making sure your tires are filled up. It's not making sure the lug nuts are tight. It's like break it down, take everything apart and not, you don't have to take it to the chassis, but right. you can at least take a look at your, your joints, all your Himes. You can take a look at all, you know, your bearings, things like that. And, and start to look at, and when you do that, you're, you're on a, you're on a, a, a path, a, tra a trail to find that. And then you'll find other things along the way. Right. So, um, you know, take care of your car is more than just changing the oil once a, once a year or whatever most people do. Right. I know. And that's, that's one thing that I learned from my brother. My brother is, is a big checkers off rotary. He's raced class five cars, class seven trucks. And he, um, you know, he's shown me that the, you win a race in the garage prepping, like, you know, th when he, when he do, he'll do a 400 mile race, come home, rip the car, the chassis, fully rebuild it, go through everything and then go out and finish another race. And it's like, he never breaks unless something just catastrophic happens. And it, it was a driver error, but he, um, he's shown me that. And I've taken that mentality to my car and every 600 miles, I'd break that thing down and go through it. Now the more race. So we did Coos Bay on it, which was some pretty hard sends up there. And then, <laughs> and then we came back and did the more race. So like, I don't even want to take my car anywhere now until I go through it. Cause I'm like, it's making noise and stuff squeaking. And I'm like, it needs to be gone through. Like just right. hands down, rip it all apart, go through it, put it back together. So, that so does the family cool. like to uh, get out and rip in the car as well? Yeah, man. My, my wife loves it. I have a 15 year old daughter that, um, has been getting behind the wheel now. You know, she's, she's coming up. Uh, she's a, she just started high school. She is a junior. And so she's like, well, I'm, I want to start driving. I'm like, well, guess what? I learned off road. That's where I learned how to drive. That's where you're yep. going to learn how to drive. You know, it's, it makes sense. You can slide the car. You learn how to brake. Like you, it gives you more 
uh, more situations of like extreme handling that you can take to the streets. Right. Right. So, you know, she doesn't, she didn't want to drive the can-am and I'm like, well, <laughs> we're going to learn in this, uh, before I take you in a parking lot in a car. And so she's done a really good job with that. My wife, when I first got, when I first met her, she, um, they, they weren't in uh, like her family is just like they hike and like camp. And so it's definitely been an adjustment for her and the off-road racing, but you know, she's adapted and, and she loves it and, and God bless her. You know, I'm a, I'm kind of a handful. I'm, I'm a wild card. I'm always doing something. And doing <laughs> something and I just don't slow down. And she has been, you know, my rock. She just supports me. And she's like, whatever you want to do, I have your back. Let's go do this. And so I'm actually, um, <laughs> I owe her a trip to a beach somewhere. <laughs> I'm always like, we're going on vacation. She's like, your vacation is a week camping and work and racing. And she's <laughs> like, I just want to go somewhere and sip my ties on the beach. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we'll, we'll have to do that one of these days. <laughs> We'll have to, we'll have to have you guys come up for one of our, uh, overland trips where we camp off the rigs and uh, see how she likes that. Yeah. So, uh, you go with Ian from full throttle. Uh -huh. yep. Yeah. So I've been talking to Ian about those. I'm definitely interested in doing that. And he's, uh, he says some pretty amazing things and, and I'm not going to lie. The photos that he posts just look like pure bliss. So it gets, it's pretty, cra it's pretty crazy and every adventure is different. Right. And so you have tons of stories to bring home every time you go out and it's, it's always a good time. And the more prepared you are, the more stories you have, it's yeah. the underprepared where you only have two or three when you fail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I'm definitely interested in it. So there's some, we got a lot of stuff in the books for the, for 2022. So I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see what's this going to go this year really has blown up for me with the car. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're getting on, on point now that, almost every weekend starting to book out with, with fun events. Like next weekend, we have an open house for desert whips at their new location. Uh, super excited about that. Um, Sand sports show, really excited about that. The unveiling of the new car. I will give you a hint. Um, so you said it earlier. So the, the new name of the car is going to be thunderstruck. <laughs> Oh, Hey, yeah. So a little foreshadowing there, a little foreshadowing. It's uh different color schemes. We're going off a of different, we're actually pulling the color schemes from uh, one of my all time favorite movies. So, um, it, nice. should, be, it should be pretty cool. I'm, I'm, I'm right. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. You'll have to share some photos with us and we'll, and we'll post them up for you. Definitely. Definitely. So we'll, so I think I'll be in, uh, Oklahoma when you guys are doing Sandsport. So yeah. Yep. Uh, so we wanted to go to Oklahoma, but I, it just didn't seem in the cards with everything we got going on and then trying to get transportation out there. It's, it was hard. Q's Bay was hard, man. That, like, um, that was a trip for you. How many miles did you put in? So that was, um, what? 850 miles one way. And, and with no sleep, we just pulled it straight through, um, dirt design gave us their 54 foot flatbed toy hauler or, or car hauler. And we loaded all the dune destroy cars on and mine and <laughs> Shannon from dune destroy. And I were like, all right, we're just going to go. And like, yep, send it. <laughs> we left on a Monday after work at 7 PM, drove straight through the night there, got there at noon and like, Everyone was like, let's go to the dunes. And so I was like, <laughs> okay. I'm like, I couldn't even talk. We went to the dunes. We rode around had some fun. By the time we were driving to the hotel, I couldn't even put sentences together. I was so tired. I was just like <laughs> room bed now. <laughs> That's funny. I think somebody, one of you guys posted some social stories or whatever. And <laughs> you guys were in the hotel or whatever. You're just, it was like, there was no conversation. There was just like, eh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, was, I was so spent, man. I was, I'm not going to lie. When I, just coming home from that was rough too. Thankfully, John rode back with us. So we were able to, you know, we had three drivers in the car. It was a little bit easier because we got time to sleep in the back seat. But um, it was the same thing. We ran all day Saturday, did Huck Fest, loaded up, went to the hotel, showered, and we're on the road at 830. And we pulled into my house at like 230 in the afternoon the next day. Yeah. And I was just straight through. Like we just, every dude, that trailer was so heavy. I had to stop for fuel every 200 miles. <laughs> that's <is laughs> like, crazy. That, it's a big, yeah. it was a big boy though. I mean, that's a big load. Yeah. We, uh, we kind of went under the radar. We had pretty sure we needed a class A to hold that. <laughs> <laughs> no one noticed. <laughs> do what you got to do. So yeah. what, uh, what do you guys got coming up here? I mean, well, first of all, before we get into that, um, how did you and the Duna and Destroy boys kind of come together and, and how did that crew kind of, cause I mean, that's not, if you look at the perspective of things, they're not really that old of a group as far as social media world goes, you know, like internet time. So how did yeah. that all come together? 
So, you know, I was, I was very blessed with that. So I, I had been talking to Nick Farmer from Desert Whips for, for a while, just through, you know, Facebook and he runs a really good forum there. And hands down, that guy will come and help any one of his members anywhere. I've seen him just drive on a whim to Dumont and help recover cars. Like he is just for the cause and just hands down him and his wife are just amazing people. So we got invited to trail hero. Um, it's a, a TV show, um, or trail an event that has media coverage and thus a yes. movie at the end. <laughs> right. So we got invited to go do that. Uh, two and two, I, I, you know, I worked this. So two and two was the title sponsor for gloves. We donated like 300 pairs of gloves because everyone that runs it is all volunteers. Um, and you know, Duna destroy was there with Mick farmer. And so they're part of the, you know, they're in the same click and they camp together in Glamis. And so I got to meet John, Kyle and Shannon through Nick. And it just, we had such a great time hanging out together and we all just like instantly clicked. Like it was just, it, it, it was almost like we knew each other for years. And, um, you know, we were talking about Glamis and I'm like, all right, well, we're going to be out there Thanksgiving. We don't do a lot of uh, Glamis trips because it's like a seven hour pole for us to go down there. Those guys live an hour and a half away. So they're like every <laughs> other weekend we're there. And so I'm like, well, we go for a week Thanksgiving and, you know, they invited us to go camp with them and Thanksgiving was just awesome. The whole group is just open arms friendly and they rip through the dunes. Like I, when I go there, I drive. And a lot of people that come with me are like, dude, you're driving too fast, slow down. And I'm like, I really don't feel like I'm pushing it that hard. Like I got my family in the car. We're just, I know the lines I've been riding in Glamis forever. And if, as long as you can see the lines and flow, you just pull on people. And, um, we went out with Nick and those guys and they just, they rip, like they battle. We are three wide through the dunes. Everyone holds their lines. There might be some bumping, but like we legit race through the dunes. So <laughs> it was like, Oh my God, this is the most fun I've ever had. And I don't know if you guys know this, but Nick farmer is legally blind in one eye and he's the fastest guy I've ever seen through the dunes ever. Like he is <laughs> it blows my mind. I had no idea. We, so we went on night rides with him and I didn't know this. I've been riding with him for almost a year and, and this came up and I'm like, dude, how can you see at night? You need light bars. Like he just got the stock headlights on this Polaris. And he goes, well, he's like my, you know, I can't see out of my one eye. So too much light, like makes the depth perception weird. I'm like, what do you mean you can't see out of one eye? Like in the passenger seat and we're ripping through the dunes. He's like, oh yeah, at legally a, at 100 miles an hour. Oh yeah, by the way, like, I can't see. <laughs> instantly, my seatbelts got tighter. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and, and and it's crazy. That guy that guy knows Glamis so well and has been riding there for so long. Like, dude, I mean, I put my daughter in his car a ton of times. Like, she she loves. She she doesn't get car sick. He's just flows and it blows my mind at, at, at the speed we go through the dunes. He is able to still look, you know, two dunes ahead and plan lines to keep us moving at speed through there. And it's just, he's phenomenal. It's, 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 it's crazy. So, but the whole time, all the dune destroy guys and us, and the, there's, you know, there's probably another eight guys in the desert whips crew. We're going through the dunes in a trail of anywhere from 15 to 30 cars, just banging bars the whole way. Like when we roll into the swing set, like we roll in in force. It's like a fight. <laughs> it's a wall. Like everyone's like, Oh, <laughs> they're here. <laughs> so it's, uh, it really transpired to be a fun group to be with, man. And I'm, I'm very thankful that we all got to meet and, and you know, everything clicks. So it's, it's beautiful. That's rad. So what kind of, uh, what events you got coming up? You said, you mentioned sand sport, uh, what else you got going on? So we got sand sport show coming up. Um, I think that's the next event. Um, got a lot of work to do on the car to get it done. Car's got to go. And to be uh, clear, you're, you're taking your current car, stripping her all the way down and then rebuilding her. Yep. Stripping all the way down, rebuilding it. Um, some new parts, new wheel company. Um, uh, yeah. just kind of going through the whole thing. So we'll be, we, we have to, we have a photo shoot this month. So I got to finish the car by the end of the month. We're going to go out to LACR and do a photo shoot. So we have content for the sand sport show to unveil it. Um, and then we have another photo shoot, um, with dirt design coming up in September. And then October is going to be busy. We got UTV takeover in San hollow, which I cannot wait to go to. Um, be epic. San hollow is, is just an amazing place. And I'm looking forward to hanging out with you again. I'm still waiting to see some of the videos that you had from, uh, Bay. you know, I saw you. I have four there. terabytes of video to go through <laughs> and zero time to do it. So <laughs> I know dude, you had that camera in your hand for like eight days straight filming the whole time. I was like, I don't envy your editing. Video. Uh, no, it's almost so, the easy part is to, to suck it up all day long from sun up to sun down and, and the hard parts, the sitting behind the desk when you get home. So 
Yeah. Yeah. So I'm on the fence about doing trail code the week before UTV takeover in San hollow, just cause I don't want to spend two weeks in San hollow and then come back and go to Glamis afterwards. So we got right. every, dirt designs trying to put together a big media package with all the dirt design trucks and crew for Halloween and Glamis. Typically we don't go to Halloween and Glamis cause it's so hot. I'm just not a fan of being hot in the desert where there's no shade. Yeah. But, um, we'll see how it works out. So, I mean, the, the biggest one that I'm looking forward to right now is, is San hollow with you guys. So the car will be ready. Um, I, I don't think I'm going to run the new body there. Uh, we're going to save that for, for a couple of the shoots we got coming up. Um, like we're doing mint 400, uh, in December rage. At the You're going to run 400. It's in the air right now. It's gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> it depends on the level of support we can get to, to run that race. That is a really hard course. Um, and you might need some trailing arms on that one. Yeah. Well, I, I think, I mean, the trailing arms that I have will work. I just got you. It's, it's not a sprint, right? It's, it's, it's a long race. You gotta be methodical about it. And the, but the terrain there, I mean, Las Vegas terrain, Nevada terrain in general is just some of the most brutal terrain out there. It is not friendly. It's rocky, it's sharp edges. It's, it's, it's just nasty. So, and flying over it, it doesn't look like anything. It just looks like a bunch of bushes out in the middle of the desert. I mean, you feel it. Like there was some sections of the sand wash that I was going down at Glen Helen, dude, where I legitimately had arm pump because the car was just, <laughs> and I'm at a hundred miles an hour. The car did not, <laughs> it was not happy. <laughs> right. I know you have a hard out today to get to some meetings and stuff. Um, where can we find you guys online? Where can we follow your uh, adventures and uh, what, what else you got going on that we can follow? Yeah, man. You can definitely look us up on, on my personal Instagram, uh, cowboy underscore deluxe or just type in Brent Gillum, definitely, uh, follow us on two and two performance page, uh, our Instagram there. They, you know, we post a lot of the stuff there, my Facebook page. Um, and then, uh, I'm starting up a YouTube. It's going to be the adventures of cowboy deluxe. <laughs> so nice. we're going to, we're going to get that rolling here. It's just, it's a lot of hard. It's, it's hard to shoot and edit and post and do everything else we got going. Wait a minute. All that, all that things that we just talked about. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, where do I fit that in? You know, like I'm almost at the point with my social media stuff that I keep trying to get my wife to run it. I'm like, Hey, can you just run my social media accounts and reply to everybody? So everyone gets touched on, you know, cause I love the fact that like we, when we went to Coos Bay, there was a ton of people that had already been following the build. Like they were like, Oh my right. God, dude, I know this car. Like, can we get pictures? I was like, it was very humble, humbling. You know, I was like, yeah, let's go. So uh, and it's crazy. Cause the Northwest doesn't have that, right? Like we don't have trophy trucks and, and class 11s and all this other stuff that you see in Southern Cal and Arizona and Nevada and all that all the time. Yeah. Like we're, we're pretty much stock or just rebuilds of stock. Right. with some bolt-ons up in the Northwest. So seeing something that custom out on the dunes is always an exciting time. Yeah, it was, it was cool, man. It was really humbling. Just, I mean, everyone was so nice up there too. So it was, it was awesome, but yeah, just uh, stay tuned on social media. And um, are you going to come down for a sand sports show? Or are you going to just be, Oh no, you're going to be, I'm stuck up in Oklahoma uh, for that event. Uh, I won't be able to make it this year. I was hoping to, especially now, especially after last year's debacle uh, to get up there and, and see a full actual show, but, uh, but I'll be busy. So uh, hoping that maybe SEMA or one of those bigger shows down there, I can get down and, and visit with everybody and, and have a good time. Let me know. We'll probably be at SEMA as well. I'm working on a couple things there. Um, and they, yeah, definitely looking forward to uh, San hollow UTV takeover. We're going to be sending it pretty hard. So, well, everybody look forward to, uh, checking out the new build. Uh, you can see the car and it's halfway updated glory in San hollow. Um, and, uh, check out, uh, his social, because I'm sure at, at some point he's going to get back on the racetrack and, uh, destroy some more parts. So, um, have a good time, uh, building the car. We look forward to the pictures, send us some stuff. We'll share it. Uh, but you can follow, um, him and all of his social pages, uh, two, one, two and Dune and Stroke boys are always a good time to follow as well. Um, you can follow the side by side guys off road podcast on iTunes, Google, um, Spotify, iHeart, all the places that you enjoy getting your content and YouTube as well. So next time, peace.